What's up you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carlos Victorino. And this is these vlogs. A little update. The lockdown's still happening, obviously. I wear my mask in a little bit. And um, so Monday, the gym is opened up, which is a good thing because I gained a little bit of uh, lockdown fat. So I'm trying to lose that. And today actually are the movie theaters that opened up. So that's where we're heading right now. We're heading to the movies. Gonna watch a movie for 15 cents. Kind of pumped about that because I love movies. Don't know which ones I'm gonna see yet because I gotta see what's the options out there. I'm gonna just make a quick little vlog about that. Kind of try to get back to the habit of vlogging and everything. And I'm gonna mash by a video of my top 10 movies and top five franchises together since it's movie related. I figured it'd be like a good little short video for you guys to watch. And just get back into making videos, you know? I'm still gonna bust them out as they come, but not like every week or anything. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. I'm around people now, so I gotta wear a mask. Um, so yeah, as you can tell, I'm taking the light rail down to the movie theater because my car keeps breaking down. And I've had this car for 11 years now. So David Dobrik, if you're watching this, I'm wearing your merch, man. I can use a new car. My car keeps breaking down on me. I know you give out cars, so. <laughs> so I can use a new car. So it looks like that was a bust. The, uh, apparently the movie theaters aren't open today. Only some select theaters are open today. And they're not gonna open until it's safe or whatever. I don't know how it works. I should just check the website because it said it on the website. Um, and I would have stayed at the mall to look around or whatever, but all the shops are closed. And they're only adding in like a few people at a time, like VIP treatment. I wasn't really willing to wait around just to shop around and not even buy anything. So I'm gonna head back to, I'm gonna head back home. I'm gonna just pump out this list of my favorite movies. Hey guys. So it's been about like two weeks since I recorded that vlog that you guys just watched. I've been trying to come up with all the movies that I've seen that I like and try to rank them in order. And I'm, and I'm a big fan of movies. So I've seen a lot of movies. One thing I will say is I've never seen any of the classics. So you're not going to see any classics in my list because I like movies that have a wide variety of like different categories. I like a movie that has comedy, that has action, that has drama, that has rom-com, everything. I don't like to stick to just one genre. You'll see that and you'll see that throughout my list and I'll explain kind of why I like each movie. And I don't have a top 10. I have like a top nine that I came up with because it was hard to think of all the movies that I watched. Top 10 movies are ranked in order and it took me a while to like kind of put them in order. Now my top franchises, that was easy. So without any further ado, let's just get to this list. We're gonna work from the bottom of the list up and we're gonna name all the movies and why I like them. And we're also gonna name a few honorable mention of movies, of movies that I liked, but they're just missing that one thing to kind of make them a good movie for me. Well, actually they are, they are these are all good movies. I love, I love all movies. I don't know about you guys, but I like to rewatch a lot of movies. And the way I came up with this list is if, I was heading somewhere and this movie came up on television, not on Netflix that I could rewatch later or any other streaming platform. But if they came out on TV and I had no option but to stay home or go to where I was going, I would have to watch this movie because I liked it that much. So at number nine, I like I said, I try to like have a different variety of movies. And at number nine, I have The Lion King, the cartoon version. This is probably the only cartoon movie that I've actually really liked. I remember seeing it when I was really young. I think it came out when I was like four years old. And it kind of just stuck to me. Like I like I say, I could watch, I could watch this any time it pops up. I'll stick around and watch the whole thing. Because it's just it's a good movie. I haven't seen the live action version one yet. Because I, I heard it wasn't that good. And I don't want to like ruin the uh, the memory of it, you know. At number eight, we have the dragon story. Which is the Bruce Lee kind of documentary i guess it um 
kind of told the story of like how Bruce Lee came to America and started like teaching his like um, form of fighting. I don't remember what it's called. Yeah, he came to America, how he uh, met his wife, how he got married, how he raised his kids and like how he died with his little dragon curse or whatever. But this movie was really amazing because it kind of depicted Bruce Lee as like a regular person and like how he just wanted to like help people and obviously the fighting. I love Bruce Lee. Um, so yeah, that's my number eight movie. At number seven, we have Remember the Titans. This movie was just a great movie. This movie got me into football. Um, I remember watching it like in my early, like probably 10, 12 years old. And then it's not only just a football movie, but it's kind of like a segregation ending or whatever. And having two schools come together with uh, black students and white students. And like at that time, it's a historic movie, obviously. Um, how they work together. And like this movie set the course for all these other movies of like having a coach come in and work with players to like better themselves. I feel like this movie was a pioneer of like all those movies. And it's just a great movie. Like it has a great story. And, and it has football. I mean, who doesn't love football? At number six. All right. If there's one thing you guys should know, I'm a huge Marvel fan. And I love Marvel movies. But they're not on this list. You'll you'll see why. But I do have one DC movie that I have on this list. And I don't really like DC at all. But this movie is just a masterpiece. A great story. Great characters. The greatest villain that I've ever seen, really. Um, if you guys don't already know, it's The Dark Knight. This movie is a masterpiece. Heath Ledger's Joker, no one can top that. I know people argue about like all these Jokers or whatever, but to me, I mean, Heath Ledger, he, um, he's he been in a, whole, a few other movies, and unfortunately he died because of this movie, because like the Joker character took over him or whatever. And um, I don't really know how to rank the Batmans, but I think, uh, what's his name? Think I'm blinking on his name, but the guy that played Batman, I think he was one of the best. He wasn't the best, but he was one of the best. At number five, we have a biopic. Um, I really wanted to put Straight Outta Compton, but this movie was, but uh, Straight Outta Compton was kind of, I don't know. It was a good movie. Don't get me wrong. I love all these movies, like I said. But there is one movie that kind of just wins the cake for me, and it's a no-brainer for me. I mean, I'm Hispanic. And this is like a pivotal Hispanic movie. Anyone that watches the movie, I can tell you will love it. And that's the movie of Selena. Everyone knows who Selena is. Selena was just a, a huge artist. She um, she died in her prime. She wasn't even up there. She was barely escalating. If you ask anyone, everyone knows that they hate the lady that killed Selena. Because the whole story, I mean, if you guys don't know the story, it's a girl that was forced, kind of, it's kind of like a Michael Jackson. She was forced into the music. Because her dad was a musician. And he found out that she could sing. And she was really good. And like she blew up in a, in Texas. She started blowing up. She was like a local person. And she started blowing up growing more and more. Because she was just that talented. Um, I recommend you guys watch the movie. Because it's just a really good movie. And I think they're making a like a TV show about it. But I'm not going to watch it. Because it doesn't. It doesn't live up to like her legacy. Her legacy is just so great. And go watch the movie, trust me. Since we're kind of naming off movies that I would put on this list, but I'm not, let's do my honorable mentions right now. A few movies that I wrote down on my list, because I made a list, I try to like organize and everything. A few movies that are, are like really good, but just aren't there. They're like, there's something missing. In no particular order, we have, um, which one should I say? A warrior. Warrior is like a UFC movie where um, it's a brother, it's two brothers, one of them I think was already a fighter and another one came from the military but he was AWOL, he was a marine and like he didn't say who his name was, he just went into UFC, started fighting and he came up from the ranks and his brother came up. Another movie that I liked but really isn't there yet is Upgrade with Tom Hardy. It kind of... It didn't really flop. It just didn't get the credit it deserved, I guess. Um, it came out same time as he did Venom. And they have about the same concept. Because Venom is a little parasite thing that touches the body. And um, kind of controls his body and does all the movements and everything. 
I agree it's pretty much the same thing, but except it's like a little chip in his mind because he, in the beginning of the movie, he like suffered a car accident or whatever and he couldn't walk or anything and he was on the verge of dying. And a scientist came up to him and said, I could save your life if you give me the opportunity to give you a chip in your in your brain or whatever. So he agrees to it and his chip kind of controls his movements, it allows him to walk, but it is connected to like a like a server or whatever. So the guy could shut it off whenever he wants. So he has to do whatever the chip says. And the chip kind of gets like an AI. I don't want to spoil anything, but it's just, it's a really good movie. All right, so I want to make this kind of fast because I don't want to take up too much time on this video. Uh, the next movie we have is Romeo and Juliet. The one with Leonardo DiCaprio. It's a Romeo and Juliet story, same lines and everything, but it's more modernized. And they have like guns instead of swords. And it's, it's kind of set to the modern time, but like back then kind of. It's kind of confusing. Um, you guys know the story of Romeo and Juliet, obviously. It's a big story and I love the story because I studied it in high school. I studied it like four or five times because I jumped around different high schools and they all studied the book. So I know the story really well and I know a lot of the lines. Another movie that I liked but really didn't make the list was Kingsman. Kingsman was a great like spy movie where uh, it kind of made fun of spy movies. Like, it made fun of James Bond and all that. And it didn't take itself too serious. And, like, <clears throat> most movies are based on how good the villain is. And the villain in this movie was really good. And we can't ignore the church scene. The church scene really made the movie for me. Like, it was so great. I love that movie. I'll watch it um, whenever it pops up. But I won't really go out of my way to watch it. Another great movie was Interstellar. Um, I really followed it along really well. It made a lot of sense. And actually, um, I don't know if you guys know, but uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, he uh, went with Cinema Sins. Cinema Sins is a movie that kind of reviews movies and points out all the flaws. And yeah, they're here on YouTube. Go ahead and um, look it up after this video. And he actually explained some of this concept since it's like a science movie or whatever. He kind of said it could be possible. So, I mean, that's a big, that's a big deal. And I did kind of follow the story along. And I know some people say it's confusing or whatever. And I guess that's kind of why I don't really put it in my top 10 list. But uh, it was really a great movie. I would watch it if uh, there was nothing to do or something. A movie that I really liked, that kind of, it's kind of new, but it really made one of the top, it really got my attention, was uh, Den of Thieves. And this movie is with uh, O'Shea Jackson, which is Ice Cube's son. And he's a, he's a really good actor. He's a really talented actor. He really is following in the footsteps of his dad. This movie was really great because it has 50 Cent actually in it too. And Gerard Butler. And I love Gerard Butler. Because of his list, um, he's one of my uh, top actors. It's Denzel Washington and Gerard Butler. These are like, I found out these are my top two um, actors. But yeah, this movie is kind of a heist movie. They, um... Pretty much rob a bank but, and it's a good it has a good twist in it too it's really good i liked it last movie that almost made the list but not quite was inside man another denzel movie which he's in it um this movie is another like bank heist movie but like the way they did it was like perfect not that i would rob a bank but like this is one really good way of robbing a bank in the description i'll put a list of all the movies that i mentioned whether they're on this list or not, they'll be down in the description. So just go ahead and scroll down there and you can see my list. All right, back to this list. We stopped off at number five, so let's go to number four. Number four is another Denzel movie, which is John Q. John Q is about, um, it starts off with a kid playing baseball and he has like a heart condition. Like he's playing baseball and he's running the bases and he clutches his chest and he falls to the floor, like face down. And his dad, Denzel Washington, runs over to him and he had to go to the hospital and like get all his surgery or whatever. And he finds out his heart is too weak because it's it's too big or something. And he has to get like a heart transplant. But this is back in like in the early 2000s and healthcare wasn't as big as it is right now. But again, this kind of movie like put attention to it because like how you have to there's, they come up with a whole bunch of different like health insurance like topics to talk about. And it's 
It puts a lot of things in per perspective, and well, you just you just gotta watch it. <laughs> it's a good movie, but that's why it's literally my top five. And at number three, which one is it? At number three, we have an iconic character that everyone loves, Robin Williams. And all of all of his movies are great. Don't get me wrong; I love all his movies. But I had to put I had to pick one, and the one movie that I picked was Patch Adams. He played a suicidal person, but um, then he found like a love for like helping people. So he decided to become a doctor because he thought doctors were the people that helped people. But then he found out that doctors were just, it was just a job for them or whatever. But he wanted to change that. And um, yeah, just, if you guys haven't seen Patch Adams for some reason, because this is just a great movie, Robert Williams is an iconic character. It's just a great movie, like, the ending is perfect. His speech at the end. At number two, we have Armageddon. I know it's not realistic at all. There's no way that they could get uh, drillers to go to outer space. Like, they even, in the commentaries, they explained it, how it wasn't, wouldn't it be easy to explain to astronauts how to drill, and to drillers to become astronauts. And in the commentary, the director, he just says, shut up. But, um, it, I mean, it's just a movie, like, Movies are supposed to be like not non-fiction or movies are supposed to be fiction. Um, <clears throat> so this movie is like, it's just a good movie to watch. It, uh, it has a good storyline. It's not, I mean, we're not saying it's realistic, but the story is like, it makes sense. Like it's perfect. And the scene where, uh, <clears throat> and I watched this when I was like a little kid. The scene where uh, the dad talks to the daughter and he like kind of wishes her well with when she fin when he finally approves of her boyfriend, which you'll see in the movie. Like it's this whole thing. It was really like a touching movie, like <clears throat> and it kind of like I wanted that relationship. If I ever were to become a dad, which I am now and I do have a daughter, I would want that relationship. We're not going to talk about my, uh, we're not going to really talk about my uh, relationship right now because that's for another story, but anyways, it was just, it was, I feel like it was a great movie, and that's why it's number two, because I, it was one of the, it was kind of like one of my first movies when I was really getting into movies, so it like really stuck to me, and my number one movie that I love, no matter what, that I watch, I'll probably watch it right now, well not right now, because I'm going to the gym after this, but um, my number one movie, obviously is with Gerard Butler, um, Law Abiding Citizen. This movie was just a great movie. It influenced a lot in my life because the movie is about a guy who, uh, it starts off with this guy getting stabbed and his wife is killed and his daughter is killed. So he goes to court and sues the guys because he saw them, but by legality or whatever, <clears throat> they kind of get off, you know, legality or whatever. So, the father that got stabbed, which is Gerard Butler, he does years of studying. He does uh it's it's just crazy because he's done he's he was like military or whatever, and he was like a special like secret service or I don't know he was something big in the army, and then he he studies the whole laws in the state, um, and he, like it's just a good movie like. You go watch it like this movie like changed the way that I word things because wording is really important because there's a scene where he like he kind of confesses to like murders but he doesn't because of his wording and that's like I make I make wording really important whatever I say I really mean it because I took the time to think about what I say this movie kind of made me want to go into law and like study like law or whatever all right, so those are my movies. And the movies was like the hard part, especially ranking them in order. But uh, now that we got that out of the way, the uh, movie franchises that I love, that was that was really easy because I know what I like. We'll kind of rank them, but it doesn't really matter. It's not that important for me. Um, at number at number five, we have the uh, the board movies, the ones without, um, I don't even know the other ones, but the original ones. The one with the, uh, Matt Damon. I think there was like three or four of them. As a guy, I love action movies, but this, this movie, like the fighting in it was perfect. 
It wasn't like scripted or anything because in a lot of movies, at least for me, I could like see a fight, a fighting scene, and I can see that in their head that they're counting. They're like one, two, three, four, and they know what to do. But in like Jason Bourne movies, I feel like one of the best scenes was in the second one where he jumps through the window and he fights this guy. It seemed like realistic. Like I know obviously that people aren't like good fighters like that, but he was like a trained fighter and like the story like to build up to him, like it was perfect. Like he was a sleeper agent or whatever and <clears throat> he had to find out who his identity was, which is why his name is Jason Bourne, but it's like Jason Bourne because he doesn't really know what his real name is and he's trying to figure that out. And he finds out a lot of things in between. Um, so yeah, that's my number five. It's not, there's not really a ranking. This kind of just the way my list is. Um, number four, I will put, and number four, we'll put The Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, I have the whole series. I started watching these when I was a kid and I, I don't really like scary movies because they're not that scary, but this movie was really scary. I mean, I saw it when I was like 10 years old and I started with the third one, the one where they go to, which one was it actually? I have them here. Yeah, it's the third one, the Dream Warriors, where they go to the psych ward and they take pills to not dream or whatever, or it is, or is it to sleep or something like that. But yeah, they it's all these kids that have had dreams of Freddy Krueger before. And they're all put together and they bring him back up again. Freddy Krueger, he lives in your nightmares. So that's the only way he can survive. There is actually, let me see, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight movies. Yeah, and I've seen them all. I have them all. I watch them occasionally. I know Halloween is coming around, so I'll watch them for Halloween. Number three, everyone can relate to this movie or this franchise. Um, do I have it here? I do. Um... As a millennial, I think everyone knows what house they belong in. Um, I kind of belong either in Slytherin or Gryffindor. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about by now, I'm talking about Harry Potter. Harry Potter is an iconic movie. Everyone loves Harry Potter. Who doesn't like Harry Potter? Like I said, everyone knows, especially millennials, everyone knows what house we belong in. Um, this movie is also eight movies. And... I think there's like seven books, but they put the seventh book in two parts. Yeah, I'm not even gonna rank the movies. I could do that for another video. Um, more than that at the end of the video. But yeah, it's pretty much a story about a boy that figures out he's a, a wizard and he goes to wizarding school. It's kind of funny to explain it because if you don't know the movie, I don't know what to tell you. And he kind of like has to kill his killer which didn't kill him successfully <laughs> it's a good movie i got i really like it um and number two i don't know if i should put out number two or number one because these movies kind of fluctuate let's do the obvious one first obviously you guys know i love marvel let me uh give you guys a little preview i have all the marvel movies out to date it's a little let me show you in order actually. This is phase one. This is phase two. This is phase three. And this is phase four. This is with Endgame and everything too. Um, I'm a huge Marvel fan. I could talk about Marvel for days, but I'm gonna try to keep this short. I'm a huge Marvel fan. Like I don't know how else to explain that. Even before these movies, like the cartoon X-Men, like I love X-Men, don't get me wrong. And I didn't include this in this list because they did a horrible job with like the time jumping and everything. Like they kind of ruined the movie. But I'm so glad that uh, Marvel has the rights to X-Men now. So I'm I'm so pumped to see how they're going to include them into the MCU. And they have, they just got Spider-Man throughout in the, in phase two or phase three, I would think it was. They have X-Men. Um... <clears throat> Fun fact, I don't know if you guys know, but uh, Blade was the, the kickoff to, like, not the MCU, but just for Marvel movies. Because that was the first Marvel movie that was ever made. Um, and it, it's funny to think of that Blade, a vampire, like, a vampire that's a vampire hunter, is a Marvel character, but 
he's actually in the in line for a movie so i'm kind of pumped to see how they're gonna revamp that and at this point i have to say um rest in peace to stan lee he's the creator of one of the creators of marvel and he just opened this universe for a lot of people everyone loves marvel everyone loves mcu everyone loves superheroes everyone wants to be a superhero and also we gotta say rest in peace to um chadwick boseman who just recently passed not even a week ago he was he played black panther but not other but other than black panther he was just a great person he was a very humble dude um what else can i say man he was just not don't just watch uh black panther for him but watch 42 watch get on up watch 21 bridges watch the dawn bloods watch all these movies he's a he was a very talented actor and um he's just a great loss he was a humble dude man he was a great dude and he fought um cancer silently nobody knew about it until his time of his death which is uh unfortunate i know there's like there was comments about how his he lived physically but we're not gonna talk about that we're gonna stay positive and celebrate his life he was a great he was a great dude man and he will be missed obviously everyone likes marvel that's why i had to put like another personal movie that i liked at number one which kind of fluctuates with marvel these are both number ones Personally, I loved uh, Rocky. For me, Rocky was my franchise. Like, <clears throat> I grew up kind of boxing. Um, my stepdad, he taught me boxing. And I, before he even taught me boxing, I got into boxing because of Rocky. I know a lot of people love um, the, Fast, the Fast and Future franchise, which I guess is like uh, a lot of racers, they like the movie and they're glad that it blew up. But it lost its roots. It lost where it was going. And Rocky never did that. Rocky, first of all, Sylvester Stallone produced the first movie out of his pocket. It was a low-budget movie. It was really... If you guys go back and watch it and compare it to now... And I'll, I'm going to include the Creed movies as well with uh, Michael B. Jordan because they're in the Rocky franchise. They're in the same timeline. If you compare those, like, very latest movie... To the first movie there's a huge difference uh, to me personally i love rocky because like i said i was a boxer it got me into boxing and the story was good there is one movie that kind of was a flaw that we don't really kind of like acknowledge as much was uh the fifth one rocky five um it was when he took up street fighting mm, that wasn't it it was not a good move for the movie and he's taught them, like it was it was just horrible. Everyone knows Rocky Three, the one with uh, Clever Lang, which is a uh, Ice T. Um, that was the for uh, main people. That was the peak of the movie. Um, or they can say the one with the uh, Dolph Lundgren, which is with a Russian dude. Um, and I like how they re re revamped the movie with Creed with Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan is a great actor as well. Um, but yeah, I love Rocky. I was always into boxing, and this movie just hyped it up even more for the boxing world. Boxing now is really just not it, especially with a. Uh, I'm not gonna comment on Mayweather, but uh, <clears throat> UFC is now the reigning fighting world or whatever, and I'm kind of getting into UFC, but it's kind of hard because I'm used to. Boxing and UFC is more of a kicking, and I don't really like kicking. That's why I was a boxer. But there's more. It's more wrestling. And <clears throat> before I wasn't that good of a wrestler, but now I am somewhat decent, and I can hold my own. But I really, I don't know. It's a lot of work, and it's kind of hard to go from boxing for years into UFC. <clears throat> That's why not a lot of boxers really do it. Some do, but they do it early on in their career. So yeah, those are my franchises. Um, hopefully this video isn't too long. Like I said, I'll put a list of all the movies down in the description below. And if you guys want more videos of like my top whatever list, rank the Harry Potter movies, rank the Nightmare on Elm Street, rank anything. 
I'll put my top whatever. I'll rank whatever you guys want me to rank. Leave a comment down below. Um, if you don't already, subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to make more videos. Even with this whole lockdown. Um, with the quarantine going on whatever. I'm kind of over it, but whatever. Gotta make the best of it. Go ahead and like this video. And share it with people. Um, try to get my name out there. <clears throat> I will be thinking of more videos to come, come up with. And... Yeah, thank you guys for watching and until next video.